I was given a devastating news of one of my grandchildren. I immediately called Fabian and he personally attended to me and he sorted the problem out as soon as possible. It was an employment problem that we've had within the family for many, many years. And I came to see you and you were the person that really helped me. And he's trustworthy and that is why I will always vote for Fabian. Fabian, I really appreciate everything you've done for me. You are really the people's chief minister. I still remember the day that we took over. We had so much work to do, so many things to change, so much that we'd set out in a manifesto we were going to deliver. And they'd been saying in the campaign that it was going to be impossible. And look at us today. We've changed Gibraltar as a democracy. You go online now, you can see us in Parliament, you can see and watch the budget debate. I know lots of people are watching at home on their iPads, on television. They're fully engaged in the democracy that is Gibraltar. Well, we changed the way the government itself works. Instead of one man making all the decisions, we have a collegiate team, we meet every Monday, we get together as a cabinet, and we enjoy it because apart from being professional partners in politics, we're all friends as well. We make decisions together, we defend decisions together, we implement decisions together. Before it was different, of course. Sir Peter once said to me in Parliament, people have to fear you. I can think of nothing worse than being feared by our people. The way I see it, Gibraltar's a big family. We may have some disagreements, but we're all rowing in the same direction. We want to see our common prosperity be what carries on and into another generation. Just like the people from the evacuation, they made huge sacrifices to give us all, their children and grandchildren, as much as they could. We have a responsibility to do exactly the same thing for the generations that come. Look, I think it's a no-brainer. Look at the need there is for a new St. Martin's school. The needs of the children in that school, how they've changed, how that school is no longer fit for purpose, although it was at the beginning when it was first opened. And then look at the fact that there's a chance that Wefa will pay for the new stadium. We don't need to put up our own money for the stadium. Mr. Fitov is saying he'd choose to spend our money on a new stadium and not on a new school for St. Martin's. I think it just doesn't make any sense. Where's the compassion in the GSD? Where's the heart in the GSD? If you put spending your own money on a stadium before spending that money on a school for children with disabilities. The new St. Martins will be modern. It will have all the facilities those children need. It will give us flexibility to develop Dr. Hidaldi and St. Bernadette's in a more meaningful way. And we'll do it in a way that doesn't get rid of the Adventure Playground in Laguna. There'll be a better, larger playing area for children in Laguna Estate with real grass in the way that we've developed Commonwealth Park. It'll be common to the two schools and the estate in a way that can be used by children after hours. This is a magnificent project that people in that area will love that will really bring Laguna Estate and its environment up to where we promised it would be and are already taking it with our refurbishment. Gibraltar 2025 is one of our most exciting projects. It's bringing people together from different political complexions, from different professional backgrounds, to look at where Gibraltar needs to be, not in four years' time, we do that in our manifesto, where it needs to be in a decade's time, in 10 years' time, what our economy is going to be doing, what markets we need to be tapping now to be ready for then, and that's the vision that we have for Gibraltar. It's, it's a vision well beyond the arguments of today, well beyond the scaremongering that we're seeing in this election. It's about where Gibraltar is going to be when the young people today become the people who are guiding our fortunes in 10 years' time. I'm not just a caretaker these four weeks during an election campaign. I'm a caretaker all the time, looking after Gibraltar for future generations. Well, I think people know that these have been probably the toughest four years any government has had to face in relations with Spain. Señor Margallo has been very aggressive indeed 
in pursuing the claim against Gibraltar. I'm very proud of the work that we've done to take the Gibraltar message to the rest of the world, to raise the ante. So when Spain attacked Gibraltar, we defended ourselves internationally, the whole world took notice. And internationally, we won the argument. In Spain, perhaps the newspapers are still siding with their government, but I think now they're really showing Señor Margallo up for having failed in relation to his claim to Gibraltar. But in newspapers and television stations around the world, we got the Gibraltar message out. They became interested in the issue because we upped the ante and we embarrassed the Spanish government around the world by putting our arguments in a forthright, reasonable way that everybody could understand and always open to dialogue. If it wasn't the safest fuel in the world, if it wasn't the cleanest fuel in the world, I would not be proposing it. If it wasn't totally safe for waterport terraces and harbour views, I wouldn't be proposing it. My sons spend time at waterport terraces. My sons spend time at harbour views. I would not put my children ever in harm's way. It's really shocking to be told by non-experts that I'm somehow doing something that puts my children in harm's way. How callous do they think I am? I love Gibraltar, I love every single one of its people. I spend time working for them. I'm giving all my professional ability to Gibraltar. I'd help any member of the opposition if they needed my help tomorrow on any personal issue. And yet, they think they can get away with suggesting I'd endanger my own children's lives? Nobody will believe that. I've worked so hard to produce our Strongest Foundations Manifesto. I worked very hard to produce our New Dawn Manifesto. I think I've worked even harder to produce the Strongest Foundations Manifesto. It's about financial consolidation, concentrating our firepower on education and health, really building for the future. Look at our economic plan. We're going to have 300 million pounds in rainy day funds by the time we get to the next election. We've already got 120 million pounds of rainy day funds. It's about real training, real jobs, real progress. Community care will have 230 million pounds in the bank. The savings bank will have 70 million pounds in reserves. Seriously strong financial foundations for our future. Justine and I say, you know, why are we doing this to our children? Sebastian's crying, we're not giving Oliver the time, we're running out to do one function or one speech or other meetings, etc. And when you look at the choices and when you look at where we're taking Gibraltar, you look at what our plans mean for the next four, ten years for Gibraltar, we come to the conclusion that we're doing this for our children, not to our children. So on Thursday, people have a choice and they have to go out and make that choice. And I'm asking them to come out and make the choice that delivers a GSLP Liberal government for more progress, for more development, for more growth, so that for all our children, we continue to lay those strong, solid foundations for the future of this nation of ours. I've known Fabian for almost 25 years. Academically, he is top tier, intellectually top tier. I have trusted him to run my legal affairs. And I have absolute trust in his safe pair of hands to run Gibraltar.